Oh, I'm live. I'm here with Teddy, my emotional support cat. Um, <laughs> he actually has been quite good, haven't you, Teddy? But he just sits there and smiles. How could I be sad about Stinky when Teddy's smiling at me? Uh, actually, I do manage to still be sad about Stinky because Teddy is not Stinky, but Teddy is pretty special. Um, okay, well, it doesn't look like, you know, it's been a shit week for a number of different reasons. Um, so that's why I haven't done much YouTubing. I just really haven't felt like it. Yesterday, it's been quite busy. And then yesterday, it really wasn't busy. And uh, I could have done a video, but I was watching season four of Vikings and didn't want to get off the couch, even to walk two meters into here and do a video. Just wasn't going to happen yesterday. But today, managed to get there. All right. Okay. Our praise 3131. Hello. How do you feel about other modes of recovery besides the very popularized all in method? I ask as an older adult who struggles with eating disorder and um, non committent mental health issues. I don't know because I don't really. Is this the all in method? I don't know. Um, I, you probably have to specifically let me know what the other modes are because I don't watch YouTube videos. Um, or read blogs or do anything like that. I guess maybe you would be talking about the more traditional treatment method of being fed a very small amount on the meal plan. I guess you all know what I think about that. Lindsay says, I'm really struggling with the constant intense anxiety of early recovery. Any suggestions? Yes, let it go. You're anxious because you're afraid you're going to gain weight. You are. Allow that to be the reality and actually pretend that you welcome it. I know that you don't, but every time you feel that anxiety around weight gain, just say to yourself, I actually want to gain weight. Just tell yourself that. Even if you don't, just tell yourself that because you're anxious that weight gain might happen. So if you're just like, stop it, weight gain's going to happen. So stop being anxious about it because it's going to happen. And I want it to happen. Just tell yourself that. You don't have to mean it. You won't mean it because you're afraid of weight gain. Tell yourself that. That should help with your anxiety and eat more fat. Those are my suggestions. Hi, Eleanor. Oh, hi, Tabitha. What have you been up to? God, don't even get me fucking started. I've done a lot of looking for the cat. Lots. Um, done a lot of crying. Mm -hmm. Lots. Less today, thank goodness. I have been jumping my horses today, which is probably why I cried less. <laughs> Um, Evie Joy says, I'm scared of spending money on things I don't need, even if my kids want them, even if your kids want them. Is this from anorexia in the past? Probably. So when we have a restrictive eating disorder, some of us go into a whole sort of scarcity mindset that our brain associates with resource scarcity, foods or resources. So your brain thinks the resources are scarce and then we can come quite stingy. Um, among a ton of other things that we can do, hoarding, all that stuff. And so if you weren't like that, if you can remember um, before you had an eating disorder, Evie, um, if you weren't that stingy, because I wasn't, I was the person that was always at the bar buying everybody rounds of drinks. And then when I had an eating disorder, I would like avoid having to buy anybody a drink because that would cause me extreme anxiety. So because my onset of my eating disorder was quite late, I could actually remember that I enjoyed spending money, not just on drinks, other things too. <laughs> um, but so for me, I knew that that wasn't me, but I thought it was me because I didn't make that link until like way almost when I was fully recovered, I made the link like, oh, my whole like lifestyle and everything got messed up. It wasn't just the eating thing. Anyway, um, so I would just assume if I were you that your tightness around spending money is a remnant of that scarcity mindset, because once that's established, you still have to rewire it. So you can rewire all the eating stuff, but you can still have hoarding tendencies, um, money spending anxiety sort of still there until you actively rewire it. So of course, the way that we actively rewire that is by forcing ourselves to stop being tight assholes and spend some money. And I, I had to do that. I had to force myself, get your fucking ass to the bar and go people buy people drinks. And once I was there and once I got over that and I bought, like, I enjoyed actually giving, doing stuff, buying things, but it's just that anxiety about doing it. Got over it quite quickly, have to admit, do not have any problem spending money right now. So anybody that follows me on Instagram would know that I can constantly am buying animals. So that's where all my money goes. 
All right. Rachel, the shades of orange. Oh, shades of orange. Glad you are taking care of yourself and thank you for making the time for us. Oh, you really want to watch Vikings? I, I'm kind of into it. The first couple of episodes, I was like, hmm. no, I'm just, you know, they're, it really shows you, shows you how religion really just messes things up. Like, even from a very long time ago, that was the primary thing that everybody was fighting about. Like, your gods aren't the same as my gods, so therefore we need to kill you. Uh, anyway, that I digress. What was the most difficult thing for me in recovery, Eleanor? Just deciding to do it, honestly. Deciding to stop exercise, that was the most difficult decision. It took me about four years of contemplating it and kind of wanting to do it before I actually did it, like really bloody long time. Uh, but it was just so, once I've made that decision, that was the most difficult decision I think I've ever made. But once I made that decision, oh, you know, things that should be difficult decisions, like, oh, should we move to America or not? For me, like easiest decision. I'm like, sure, yeah, what's the worst that can happen? Should we get married? Yeah, why not? Like, should we have kids? Fuck no. Like things that you would think would be difficult decisions. I'm usually just like, boom, yeah, let's try it out. Deciding to stop exercising. Oh my God. That was like the hardest decision ever. I just couldn't even make the decision. It was just, it was just, I wanted to make the decision. I just couldn't bring myself to do it as if the world might explode, might explode. So there's this chance that if I decide to stop exercise, the world could explode and everybody in it could die. That's the, that was the level of, of my contemplation over that decision. Anyway, ultimately, I did decide to stop exercise and the world did not explode. I got lucky. And um, I lived happier ever after. <laughs> I kind of really did. I mean, I've had a shit week, but it's still happier ever after compared to having an eating disorder. Shit week doesn't give anything on having an eating disorder. Um, all right. Lost my place. How do I become confident in more of the clothes that I used to wear before my anorexia, but now I'm too scared because of a low body image? Just pretend. I know it sounds so simplistic, but I, I honestly mean it. Just pretend. Pretend that you are somebody who is confident in their body. Act as if you are somebody who is confident in their body. Dress like you are somebody who is confident in their body. Talk as if you are somebody who is confident in their body. Go out as if you are somebody who is confident in their body. Pretend that you are a person who is confident in their body. Even though I know that you're not, I need you to pretend. Imagine that you're auditioning for something. Uh, I don't know, some really great um, film with Brad Pitt in it. Imagine that you're auditioning for it. You really want the part. And the part involves you playing somebody who is very confident in their body. That's how I want you to act. Just pretend that you're auditioning and pretend that we're all watching you audition all the time. We're just watching you. So it means even when there's nobody around, imagine that there's, there's cameras following you everywhere drones with cameras following you everywhere but the drones can go in your house and even when there's nobody around imagine that we're all watching you and you've got to act as if you're somebody who's confident in your body so even when there's nobody else in the room you have to pretend that you're confident in your body and the reason that you've got to act like that is because your brain actually is watching you like a drone that could go in your houses that's that's actually what your brain's doing and your brain is learning from what you're doing and so even when you think there's nobody around, you have to act as if you're confident because if you act as if you're confident, your brain will watch you acting as if you're confident and the brain will start to think, well, maybe I could be confident in my body. It works. Do it. All right. Now I've really lost my place. All right. Smile says, someone kept losing weight as goal after recovery. What do I think about it? How do... I don't think you can want to lose weight to recover. Recovery become something people used to lose weight in a better way. Don't think I completely understand the question, but I think I get the gist. So you're saying that if somebody thinks they're fully recovered and they want to lose weight, well, mm, I don't know that because that means that they would be restricting food and it means that they would not have rewired fear of weight gain if they strongly desired to lose weight. So I I feel like then you're using the definition of recovery as they are no longer in an emaciated body, although they look like they're recovered, which isn't my definition of recovery. So if somebody is still desperate to lose weight, I would probably say that they 
but I've not fully recovered. <sighs> Sarah says, do you think it's possible that restrictive behaviours unrelated to food and exercise can lead to an eating disorder, i.e. the mindset transfers to food? Do you think it's possible that... God, you guys are giving me cryptic questions today. Do you think it's possible that restrictive behaviours unrelated to food and exercise can lead to an eating disorder? Oh, you mean like restrictive things around um, like money spending and things like that? I don't know. I, I honestly have never thought about that. I don't think so, because I, I do think that in order for a person to, for the, who has the genetics for restrictive eating disorder, in order for those genetics to be sparked off, I think that there has to be energy deficit. That's just like, I don't think anybody's looked into this. Could be possible. Never saying, never say no. But I think that you need to actually go into energy deficit for to biologically trigger off that eating disorder. Um, I do think, so say if you went into energy deficit, eating disorder triggered, and alongside your eating disorder, all of these other weird restrictive behaviors, like not wanting to spend money, hoarding, uh, restricting your, like a lot of us just res restrict pleasure. We're martyrs. Um, and so you start developing all those, and that then becomes part of your eating disorder neural network. Then I do think it's possible that, say, if you got recovered, um, if you then started getting weird about spending money, it's possible that your brain might associate those that that restrictiveness around money with those neural pathways that it had learned from your eating disorder. And so it might sort of associate being tight around money with other eating disorder thoughts that may lead to you desiring to eat less. Does that make sense? So I think that that could only happen, though, once a person had already had an eating disorder and had one long enough that those neural pathways has all built up. Um, but I don't know of anybody who's done that. I don't know if anybody who's fully recovered and then started to get tight about money and re-triggered their eating disorder. I'm just saying hypothetically. Um, it's an interesting question. Alice says, what is your favorite TV show and movie? You guys are asking me like not eating sort of questions. This is great. Um, probably Black Beauty. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I really like things. I really like Downton Abbey because I'm sad. I am. I'm sad and I'm soppy. Downton Abbey made me cry a couple of times. But... I really like Game of Thrones and shit like that, which is not sad and soppy. So I like a lot of stuff. I wouldn't say I have a favourite TV show and movie, although I've got some old favourites like National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and The Goonies. Okay. All right, Alice, on to a real question. Is it normal to all of a sudden start gaining weight, even though I haven't increased my food, will the metabolism catch up when I start increasing? Oh, Jesus Christ, Alice. Yes. So, hmm. you know, when you have an eating disorder, you kind of have this false belief that what you eat directly kind of results in what your body weight is. And so how that works is you think, if I eat more, I'm automatically going to gain weight. And if I eat less, I'm automatically going to lose weight. And that's just not true. It's oh, so much more complicated than that. And so, yes, absolutely. You could be eating the same restrictive amount and then you can start to gain weight. And do you know why? It's because it's not just about you. You've got this thing called a body that's got its own opinions about things and is trying to work stuff out. And so, if you're eating a restrictive amount, after a while, your body's going to go like, oh, fuck, it's just not enough food coming in. It's just not enough. What am I going to do? Because first of all, your body's going to go like, I know, well, I'll borrow some energy from the liver. So borrow some energy from your liver. And then the brain's going to go, like, oh, I'm going to borrow some energy from my brain. So your brain, your actually gray matter decreases. Your body's just sort of borrowing energy from somewhere. It's leaching it and you're getting depleted in those areas. And then at some point, your body's going to go like, oh, fuck. I'm all feral. I'm out. I can't borrow much more from the brain. If I take much more from my brain, she'll be stupid as fuck. So your body's like, well, I know. Well, I guess what we'll do is we'll just have to cut back somewhere else. We're just going to have to slow down peristalsis because there's nothing else for it. We're going to have to make some cutbacks. And so then 
your body will just be like, it'll just slow some functioning down somewhere. That lowers your metabolism because that's why your body wants to do that. Because when your body's like saying, we need to make some cutbacks, we need to slow down peristalsis, it's not just trying to do that for the fun of it. It's doing it because it actually needs to have its output be less. And so it can make changes that then lower your metabolism, which can lead to weight gain because that's what your body's trying to do. It's trying to get some energy stores. And so if you, it, it's like, if you don't, if you just keep on restricting, your body's just got to make amends somewhere else. It's got to make cuts somewhere else. It's got to leach stuff from somewhere else. And so, yes, you, you know, like if your body's desperate to gain weight, it's just trying to do that. It needs, it knows it needs some fat stores. And so it's going to try and make, if you're not um, giving it food so they can do that, it's going to try and do that from other other outputs, other, not outputs, but other places is, that it can generate itself. Um, and so that's why, you know, like after a while, your continued restriction basically just lowers your metabolism. And most people find after a while of having an eating disorder, they can restrict more and that doesn't result in greater weight loss. That's because your body's kind of got like queued up to this now. And it's like, as soon as you restrict food, it's going to go, fuck, well, we just have to make a cut somewhere else because your body is desperate not to lose any more weight. And so there's no normal here because all of our bodies are different and, and there's different responses from your body at different times as well. And so the only way that you can really just look at this is start understanding that this is a system that's just trying to live and it will do its fucking best to live for you and so it's always trying to alter all of these things all of these measures how much energy your eye uses how much energy it takes to grow your hair can it save some energy by making your nails thinner you know like it's always making these alterations to deal basically with the shit that you put it in when you don't eat enough food and so having some compassion for that and having some respect for that, you start to understand, well, fuck, the only actual answer to this is me to start to eat more and work with this miraculous thing that's trying to save my life every fucking second of every fucking day by eating more food. So rather than worrying about, oh, wow, why have I gained weight even though I'm not eating anymore and I'm still restricting, rather than worrying about that, just stop it. Stop playing this game with your body. Like, how far can I push my body before it really totally throws in the pan? Because it does. They do. And that's another thing. Like, I took it for granted, and I bet a lot of you here take it for granted. You think that you can just keep on restricting, and it's all going to be fun and games, and your body will just carry on working it out, carrying on working it out. And I thought I was invincible like that. And... I don't know, my, my body did carry on for a while, but I know, and I was lucky, but I've known plenty of people at this point, sadly, whose bodies at some point just go, fuck it, can't do it anymore. And you know what happens then? They have a heart attack and they die. And so this is not the kind of shit that we can take for granted, fucking around with our bodies, just keeping on restricting, keeping on restricting, forcing our bodies to leech try and leech energy from other places just so they can stay alive, forcing our bodies to just try and work out what it can do to lower metabolism, save a little bit every day because you're not giving it enough food. It's just so fucked up and you need to stop worrying about, oh, my body gained some weight and I didn't eat anymore. Just stop it. Start working with this thing. It's just trying to save your fucking life. And so rather than worrying about all of that, just start eating and allow your body to start replenishing itself, allow your body to start functioning optimally. Like you wonder why it's not functioning optimally. Like why is it, oh. Stop restricting food, you guys. Like stop thinking you're getting away with this shit because you're not. Like it's coming out of your teeth <laughs> and you, they don't grow again. <laughs> like your body is leaching right now. Those of you who are restricting, right now in order for your body to keep functioning it is leaching calories from other places and a lot of those places especially if you're at the age of 26 a lot of those places are not actually able to regenerate like your bones like bone density body right now if you're restricting your body will be leaching calories from your bones and that if you are over 26 you're not going to get it back that's just osteoporosis
that's just low bone density. That is you dealing with that for the rest of your damn life just because you are too afraid to allow yourself to eat. You all got to take this really damn seriously because you only can you can only fuck this up for so long. Your body can only take so much and you never know. That's the thing. You never know when it's too much because I've known people who were just function going on same every day it's not like they they were suddenly restricted a load more and then they had a heart attack and died they were just doing their daily thing like i did for so fucking long getting up going for my run pushing my body eating as little as possible all day long doing as much as possible all day long like that was what i did every day and people die from that like I've known people that are just doing their daily thing. They're just doing their Groundhog Day. It's the same Groundhog Day as any other Groundhog Day in the 8 or the 10 or the 12 or the 20 years that they've had an eating disorder. It's just that was the day where their body went, you know what, I can't do it anymore. And that was the day that their body gave up. Don't think that you're immune from that. Don't think that it won't happen to you. It absolutely will. And you have to understand that that's a reality. And I don't even know what the question was anymore. I just went off on a rant. And to whomever I was taught who's, who asked that question, sorry, I wasn't ranting at you. It's just ranting at eating disorders in general, at the mindset, the fucked up mindset that we get ourselves into, which is somehow thinking that we're immune to our bodies just going, fuck you, I'm not doing this for you anymore. Because we're not. And I think that sometimes you need a reminder, like coming on here and watching recovery YouTube stuff is not just this game that you keep playing. You have to be making changes and getting better. And if you're not, you're just fucking your life over. <sighs> anyway, happy Friday. Probably need to go and drink a glass of wine now. No, I do. <laughs> All right, guys, I gotta go. I really do have to go and have a glass of wine. <laughs> Eat. Bye. <laughs>